Today, polarized sunglasses, the polarization of electromagnetic waves and what it means for photons. Let's get started. You've probably had some experience with polarization filters, at least in the context of sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses help filter glare out coming at you from, from the sun, things reflecting light from the sun, and other kinds of like incandescent light sources. It does this by essentially eliminating half of the light coming through the lenses. We've been talking a lot about light recently and how light is made up of electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves come in precisely two polarization states, and one way to think about what that means is to think about light waves as oscillating electric and magnetic fields. The electric field and the magnetic field are always kind of orthogonal to one another, and so if the light wave is propagating in one direction, say towards the camera lens, which way the electric field is pointing determines the polarization of the light wave. We have two dimensions available to us. You can either point up and down <laughs> or can point side to side. Electromagnetic waves can, of course, be polarized in this kind of fashion linearly or in some more interesting kind of dynamical ways like circular polarization. And of course, we can push electromagnetic radiation through all kinds of really interesting materials like calcite, which will do interesting things to the polarization of the light wave. Much more interesting than, say, <laughs> passing it through just a filter. Polarization filters essentially amount to a lattice, <laughs> straight up and down slats from which electromagnetic radiation can go through if they are aligned. So for example, if the slats are aligned vertically, that means that light with its electric field aligned vertically is allowed to pass through and any light that is not aligned with that polarization lattice with those slats is rejected, is reflected, is bounced back, is filtered out. At least that's one way to think about it. I thought it would be too confusing to point out, but for Polaroid filters, a vertical polarization <laughs> filter actually has horizontally arranged really long molecules that allow those electrons to vibrate in that direction, which can in turn kind of dissipate some of the electromagnetic radiation energy along that axis, or alternatively can cause it to, to reflect backwards. Vertical light is allowed to pass through such a such horizontal lattice of molecules is because those electrons can't vibrate, so the light has no other choice but to just keep going. So let's consider the case where we have perfectly polarized light moving. That is to say, all of the light in the light beam, in the light ray, is polarized in the vertical direction. Now what this means is that there is a dependence on how much light gets reflected back by the angle at which it's approaching, by the angle of the polarization. So if, you're, if your sunglasses are aligned vertically and you're looking at electromagnetic radiation at light that's also aligned vertically, the difference, the angular difference between those two directions is zero degrees. And so 100% of the light goes through. If on the other hand, you happen to rotate your glasses by 90 degrees, then <laughs> the slats, the, the lattice is horizontal, whereas the light is still coming at you vertically, which means that precisely 0% of the light makes it through. And of course, we have everything in between. So in particular, if we rotate those sunglasses to a 45 degree angle and still pass through the vertically polarized light, what we see is that half of the light makes it through at this angle of 45 degrees. For a generic angle, say theta, between the vertical light and the rotation orientation of our, of our sunglasses, the amount of light that makes it through is proportional to cosine theta. So again, we can imagine taking the dot product of the electric field component of that light with the direction, say, n of the polarization filter. And so that would give us the magnitude of E, the magnitude of uh, the intensity of the light, if you like, uh, times cosine theta. Easy. The intensity is actually proportional to E squared, but you know what I mean. Now, of course, generically, the light that comes, say, from the sun or any other kind of incandescent light source is gonna come at you with all kinds of polarizations all built in. So you're gonna have light waves that are polarized this way and that way and this way and that way but there's only two orthogonal components to polarization at any given time, which is why we reflect half the light. 
in kind of the generic case. We know that quantum mechanics dictates that light waves are actually made up of individual integer little pockets of energy, photons. Because each photon is itself an electromagnetic wave, each photon also enjoys two possible polarization states. So light wave that is perfectly polarized in the vertical direction is composed entirely of photons that are perfectly polarized in the vertical direction. So given this fact, we are left with a really interesting question. If we shoot this polarized light beam at a pair of sunglasses that are aligned at 45 degrees so that half the light makes it through, what happens from the perspective of photons? Well, obviously, of course, half of the photons make it through. No big deal. Why are you worried about this? How is this complicated? Well, let me ask you this. What happens if there's an odd number of photons? Sure, half of them make it through, half of them get bounced back, but if it's an odd number, there's always one left out. What does that one photon do? Does it go through or does it reflect? How do we know? The, the whole point of quantum mechanics is that <laughs> photons are, are indivisible. So it is not the case that, that half the photon makes it through and half the photon gets reflected. It's either that odd photon makes it through the filter or bounces back. And nature's answer to this is indeterminate. Literally, it chooses a probabilistic approach. In other words, there is a 50-50 chance that that photon will make it through the filter. And that is at the heart of how quantum mechanics works. What actually happens is for every single photon in that light ray, there is a 50-50 chance of that photon making it through the filter or making it or being reflected back. And the aggregate statistics of all of those photons attempting to make it through the filter, that aggregate 50-50 chance like tossing a coin a bazillion times, is how we experience half of the light making it through the polarization filter. Of course, this has immediate statistical consequences for, for the real world. Quantum mechanics tells us that if each photon has a 50-50 chance of making it through and there is a gazillion photons, then what that means is there will be a probability distribution. Sure, about half of the photons will make it through the filter, but not exactly all of them. Indeed, we can use the rules of probability and statistics to compute how many uh, photons will be present. The statistical distribution will be given by the binomial distribution. Uh, so for n photons that we shoot at a polarization filter, p photons will make it through with probability <laughs> p n p, right, which is like 1 over 2 to the n times the quantity uh, n factorial over p factorial and minus p factorial. Or okay, factorial, of course, is, you know, for four factorials, four times three times two times one. What this amounts to is a statistical peak, right? If you consider the histogram over all possible opportunities <laughs> for nature to, to, to do its thing. Uh, and we'd see that, yeah, on average, half the photons make it through. But very, very infrequently will precisely half the photons make it through. Today in the exercises, we're going to go through a bunch of different iterations of what this means. Also, we'll look at angles uh, of the sunglasses for photons that are not at 45, but maybe at an arbitrary angle, just to see how the computation gets done. Uh, so now we learned the number one lesson <laughs> uh, of quantum mechanics, which we will then take and do much more calculations with. And that is that quantum mechanics is inherently a statistical endeavor. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.